unusual experiment is about to be filmed in the studios of City TV in Toronto. The stars of this show are eight people sitting around a table. Off to the side on a raised bench are three men observing the experiment. Reverend Lindsay King, psychologist Joel Whitten, and Dr. George Owen, scientific director for the Toronto Society of Psychical Research. The studio director gives the signal that the experiment may begin. The participants lay their hands flat on the table and begin calling out a name. Are you there, Philip? I want to see you, Philip. Soon, the table begins to rise, as if it had a life of its own, to the surprise of the participants. Shortly afterwards, it seems that Philip no longer wishes to remain in the middle of the room. As he heads toward Reverend King, the table moves with him. And the eight mediums have a hard time keeping their hands in place. Once the table stops, one of the participants suggests to the clergyman that he say hello to Philip. Uh, hello, Philip. The table rises in response. The only problem is that Philip doesn't exist and never did. Philip is an imaginary ghost. In the fall of 1972, Dr. George Owen, director of the Toronto Society of Psychical Research, came up with a unique experiment. George Owen, George Owen was a mathematician and geneticist. He studied at Cambridge University in England. He also had an interest in poltergeists. With the assistance of three men and five women, who had no particular gift for communicating with the spirit world, Dr. Owen conducted one of the most significant experiments in the field of parapsychology in the 20th century. They created Philip, the imaginary ghost. Philip, the imaginary ghost was a, an attempt by the Toronto Society for Psychical Research to prove that paranormal events could be created without the help of spirits from another plane. Instead of assuming that all physical manifestations were caused by the spirits of the deceased, as spiritualists claimed, Dr. Owen sought a more natural explanation. He wanted to show that living beings, through some mechanism that has yet to be explained, could project their energy onto material objects. Dr. Owen asked the group of eight, as they were called, to imagine the fictitious character with a name, age, gender, and nationality. They came up with Philip, a 30-year-old aristocratic Englishman living in the 17th century at Diddington Manor in Warwickshire, England. Then they invented Philip's life story. He had a wife, Dorothea, who was cold and frigid. He fell in love with Margot, a beautiful young gypsy. Dorothea discovered her husband's infidelity and accused Margot of witchcraft. Margot was condemned and burned at the stake. Heartbroken, Philip took his own life, jumping off the battlements of Diddington Manor. He was only 30 years old. Of all these biographical tidbits, Diddington Manor was the only element that was real. And, of course, it had never had an occupant resembling Philip. We took them several months before they had worked out the details of the character they were going to create. So it was 1973, I think, between eight and nine months later, that the experiments actually began. They met on a weekly basis 
in a designated area of the society headquarters, which we called the Philip Room. And no, this room was not used for any other purpose. Had a card table with eight uh, uh, metal chairs around it. And they met once a week for a period of well over 10 years. Philip, are you there, Philip? The group sat around in a circle with a picture of Philip in sort of a meditative state, trying to produce an apparition. And after a year, uh, nothing happened. No phenomenon, no apparition. Philip, we're looking for you. Philip, give us a sign, please. At first, the members just developed a friendship with each other. They spent months together, with no occurrences of a psychokinetic or telekinetic nature. Then at some point, they changed their strategy. And suddenly, they began to see results. Like wraps on the table or under it. And the table began to shake and move. These were physical things that could be recorded. Give us a sign, Philip. Philip, are you there, Philip? Within a month or two, Talking to this imaginary ghost, Philip, people started to get raps on the table. In turn, each person would say something like, Good evening, Philip. Hello, Philip. And there would be raps underneath their fingertips. Or if a visitor came oh, in yes, and identified himself and said, Hello, Philip, there'd be a rap underneath the visitor's hand. These raps were audible were tape recorded and had a characteristic uh, sound envelope and we've published the results of that um, auditory study. The tapping eventually led to the table being uh, shaken, shaken uh, eventually moving and eventually actually uh, turning right on its side. Those were really the, uh, the, the proofs that they had, in fact, uh, accomplished their experiment. Philip's manifestations were far from what they had hoped for, but still, the group would ask a question, and Philip would answer. Surprisingly enough, the answers always corresponded to his alleged biography. As the seances progressed, Philip became more enterprising. After a few raps on the table, he would raise it off the ground and make it dance on two or three legs. We were very careful to try and avoid hoaxes. On several occasions, we had what are called doily nights, where we would put doilies, paper doilies, under the hands of the members. And if they tried pushing the table, the doilies would simply slide across the table. So clearly the table movements were not caused by anyone pushing it. And the cameras, uh, when we had those opportunities to videotape it, it was clear that, say, two people sitting on opposite sides of the table, if they both lifted their knees, might lift the table up. It was clear that that was not happening either. Philip, are you there, Philip? Encouraged by the astounding results, other groups around the world tried the same experiment with other imaginary characters. The results were all basically the same. They told themselves they had found the magic formula. La stratégie. A mix of spontaneity combined with weekly meetings and an experimental framework. They thought this was the secret to being able to produce this kind of phenomenon at will. But they realized that this strategy alone was not enough. It also took a lot of tenacity on the part of the members. 
It would appear that the hereafter is not the only explanation for manifestations of so-called spirits. However, it's been nearly 30 years since the original Philip experiment, and parapsychologists are still just as puzzled now as they were back then as to what was producing these manifestations. It is interesting that the scientific community has never followed the Philip experiment, or indeed many other experiments of a similar nature. Why, I can't answer. I myself am fully convinced that there is a level of psychic ability that is obtainable by us if we knew how to reach it. Also, let's face it, the scientific community is always a little behind the human experience. And I think, I don't think it's any more profound than that, really. Whether you approach this from the spiritualist angle or the parapsychological angle, it's impossible to come up with scientific proof, because that proof requires that you not only be able to observe the phenomena and reproduce them at will, you must also come up with a theory to explain the phenomena and predict when they will occur. So since that was impossible in this case, the matter is still not settled.